morning and welcome to A Walk in the Word. I'm Pastor David Corum. We've reached the end of the week. It is now Friday and uh, we're looking forward to um, the last Sunday in the month of May, uh, this coming Sunday, a time to worship together. Again, we're going to be worshiping by a live stream because we're still not meeting uh, in person at our church. We hope you'll join us on Sunday at 1030. You can find it, on, find it on our website at livingwaters-ky.org, or you can find it on YouTube at our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and, and look for Living Waters Community Church, Oak Grove, Kentucky, uh, and you'll find our channel and you'll find the live stream there. Or on Facebook, uh, you can see the Facebook Live. If you go to, our, uh, to Facebook and go to Living Waters Community Church, uh, our Facebook page, and like us, then when that live event comes on, you'll be able to see it. Uh, any, any of those ways work just fine. We're glad that, that you've joined us. Um, and we are concluding John chapter 11 today. Now, if you remember, when we started, actually last Friday, it was the beginning of a saga of Jesus being notified that Lazarus uh, is, is sick unto death. Uh, we discovered that he almost as soon as the messenger was sent to tell Jesus a one-day journey to get to where Jesus was from Bethany, um, that, that Lazarus had already died. Uh, then Jesus remained where he was for two days, and then he and the disciples made the trip back, making that the fourth day before he arrived in Bethany. Uh, he, has, he meets with Martha, the sister of Lazarus, and then Mary, the other sister, and then he has to be taken to where the tomb was. He goes there, and he gives thanksgiving to God, and then he cries in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, who was dead for four days, walks out of the tomb. And that's where we pick up the story. But we're going to begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this week and for another week of a walk in the Word. Father, we pray that as we get ready for the weekend, that you would use that opportunity for us to, to invite someone to join us in, in worshiping this Lord's Day. Father, as we now partake of your word and we see the aftermath of the raising of Lazarus from the dead, let us be reminded that it all was part of your plan, that nothing catches you by surprise, and we give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are looking... At verse 45, John chapter 11, verse 45 to the end of the chapter. And so we know the last thing that happened before uh, yesterday when we ended was the man who had died, Lazarus, came out. His hands and feet were bound with linen strips, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said, Unbind him and let him go. And that's where we left it yesterday. So now, verse 45, Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. Remember, many of these Jews were hired mourners who had come because they were paid to come and to weep and to wail over the death of someone. This was their occupation. How would you like to have that job? Well, that's what they did for a living. But many of them believed in Jesus Christ, it said. But then verse 46, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So here we see a division among the Jews. Some of them saw what Jesus did, raising Lazarus from the dead. Others, instead of believing, went and told the Pharisees what happened. Jesus has a tendency to bring division every time he appears on the scene because some will accept and some will reject. And that's okay. Not everyone is going to accept Jesus Christ. But God hasn't published the list, so as long as he hasn't told us who are going to do it and who is not, we need to proclaim the good news to everybody. So many, of, some of them went to the Pharisees, verse 46, and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we to do? Okay? Alerted by the Pharisees, you need to understand that, that the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees comprised something called the Sanhedrin. 
the Sanhedrin con consisted of chief priests who were former high priests and members of the high priestly families, um, as well as the Pharisees. Now, these, these others, or Sadducees, remember we said that Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead? Well, the Sanhedrin consisted primarily of Sadducees. The minority uh, in the Sanhedrin was the Pharisees. Okay? Uh, the Pharisees could not take by themselves any judicial action. They were kind of like um, the House of Representatives today. They can't, they can't get anything done without, I'm sorry, it's like the Senate. Um, they can't get anything done if you're a Democrat without the majority agreeing to it. Well, that's the way it was here. The, San, the Sanhedrin was dominated primarily by the chief priests, and virtually all of the priests were Sadducees. <clears throat> so the Pharisees consisted, while they were, where they were influential, they consisted of a minority. And here's the deal, though. The Pharisees and the Sadducees both hated Jesus. So this is a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Do you get that? The enemy of my enemy. So my enemy is the Sadducees, if I'm a Pharisee. The enemy of my enemy. My enemy is the Sadducees, but their enemy is Jesus. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Got that? Okay. So the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. Verse 48, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. <clears throat> you got to understand, Jesus threatened literally their way of life. He threatened their very existence. Rome allowed the Jews to function primarily um, independently as long as they didn't create a problem for Rome. But the minute that they create a problem for Rome, then Rome, the heavy boot or the heavy sandal of the Roman Empire, would come down on their necks. And they were concerned that if they didn't stop Jesus, that things were going to get bad for the Jews in general. But one of them, verse 49, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, he became high priest in, uh, in uh, 18 uh, AD. <coughs> he was appointed by Valerius Gratus. His father-in-law was a man named Annas, who had previously functioned in the same position from AD 7 through AD 14. Um, and, and he exercised, even after he left office, he still had a lot of influence on Caiaphas, uh, even beyond his tenure. Caiaphas remained in office until AD 36, when, along with Pontius Pilate, he was removed by the Romans. Um, and he took a leading part in the trial and, and the condemnation of Jesus. In his court or palace, the chief priests, that is the Sadducees, and Pharisees assemble and they plotted together to arrest Jesus by night and have him put to death. So one of them, verse 49, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, 50, nor do you understand that it is better for you. I want you to hear this and I want you to hear what he says because this is very prophetic. He didn't know what he was saying it was a prophecy, but I'll explain it to you after I read it. Nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. Did you catch it? Did you get what he said? He was saying, look, it's better for one man to die than for all of us to go down in flames. What he didn't realize is that that's exactly why Jesus came. He came so that you and I don't have to die in our trespasses and sins. You and I don't have to die. One man died so that we can have eternal life. 
but 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 he goes even more so not only the children of God who are scattered abroad he's talking about the Jews and the diaspora the, the diaspora but the truth is it wasn't just for the Jews but also for the Gentiles the Gentiles became part of together formed what is one group known as the church verse 54 I'm sorry 53 so from that day on they made plans to put him that is Jesus to death so the plan was solidified after the resurrection of Lazarus when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead that was like the final straw they got together and he said look we're going to have to put an end to this Jesus guy I have to put an end to him and so look at verse 54 Jesus therefore no longer walked openly among the Jews but went from there to the region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim now if you do a search in the Bible you may not find Ephraim um, it's probably the Old Testament city of Ephron you can find a reference to that in 2 Chronicles 13 19 um, the modern day village that's, that's there today if you were to go there today is called Et Tayabe, and it's located about four miles northeast of Bethel about 12 miles from Jerusalem it was far enough away that Jesus could move freely in that area without being fearful of the Jews coming to arrest him and it says and he stayed there with his disciples now verse 55 now the Passover of the Jews was at hand okay how do we know that Jesus spent about three years in his public ministry it's because the Gospel of John gives us the reference to three Passovers well it came once a year so this is the third one so we know that the Passover of Jews was at hand this is the third Passover that Jesus celebrated with his disciples and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves how did they purify themselves they purified themselves by remember the Passover was a time when they had to get rid of all of the leaven in the house nothing they could not have any leaven at all they had to they had to clean and 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 scrub their house of leaven so many of them would leave their homes and go up to Jerusalem so that they would be prepared for the Passover they would be purified from the leaven that was around a leaven is as you know is the thing that makes the bread rise so the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Passover is what they were leaning towards. So verse 56, they were looking for Jesus and saying to one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think? That he will not come to the feast at all? I mean, you can hear them talking among themselves. Is he going to show up? I don't know if he'll show up. If he knows what's good for him, he better not show up. Uh, now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was he should let them know so that they might arrest him so they were looking for Jesus the Jews who came to Jerusalem for Passover were wondering if Jesus would show up this time and they were actively seeking to find him uh, the plot of the chief priest and the Pharisees was widely known at least enough to pick their curiosity as to whether Jesus would dare show himself in Jerusalem during that Passover event. We're going to close there because this is where the end of the chapter ends. So we're going to stop there for this week. We'll pick it up next Monday, this coming Monday. We hope that you'll join us and continue to join us every day for these 15, 20 minutes or so of walking in the Word. Again, we always want to close by inviting you to assist us in supporting the ministry of Living Waters Community Church. Again, you can get that from the Apple Store or the uh, Apple iTunes Store or from the Google Play Store. You can download that app and then look for Living Waters Community Church or you can use the direct link that's on the screen right. Let's see where it is. I got to get here. Yeah, it's right here. Right here. There it is. It's on the screen. You can see that. Yeah, that was a little cheesy. All right. Well, let me turn that off, and you can rewind if you need to get that link. Now let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this day, and I, as we look forward to the weekend and another opportunity 
to worship you. We give you thanks for what you're going to do in our lives. Father, help us to be about the business of sharing the love of Christ with all those with whom we meet as we, as we open up our country and go back to, to things somewhat close to normal. Help us to be about your business of sharing that good news with others. We give you thanks for what you're going to do and look forward to meeting together again this coming Monday as we continue a walk in the Word. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, take care. God bless.